If you are wide awake, you understand that the authoritarian left is using the permanent pandemic to achieve as many ends as they can imagine, weakening the family, restricting faith, and undermining community in order that they may rule over us as they see fit. This is Rahm Emanuel's famous dictum, never let a crisis go to waste, filled with the content from Barack Obama's Life of Julia. You remember the Life of Julia, don't you? Almost a decade ago, Obama's re-election campaign put out a promotional video that said the soft part loud. They want you beholden to government, above all else, from cradle to grave. As Bill Bennett wrote at the time, Julia's entire life is defined by her interactions with the state. Government is everywhere, and each step of her life is tied to a government program. Notably absent in her story is any relationship with a husband, family, church, or community, except a community garden where she works post-retirement. Instead, the state has taken their place and is her primary relationship. The left is using the pandemic to make permanent the lives they want you to lead. We've seen churches closed under the guise of preserving life, neighbors reporting on each other under the guise of unity. We're all in this together, so long as we all stay in our homes and don't socialize. Teachers unions are the most powerful political entities in American life, to the point of wrecking the lives of their students if the teachers don't want to work. Local small businesses have to close, but Walmart can stay open. And don't forget, Fauci knows best, parents. If you disagree with any unelected bureaucrat, even if it conflicts with what they said mere days earlier, you must hate science, and you're putting your kids and everyone else at risk. What connects all of these things? What draws them together besides that they draw us apart? Why is worshiping God, burying our loved ones, celebrating our birthdays, graduations, and marriages banned, but protests and riots allowed, if not to break the tenuous hold we have on family, faith, and community? The three things that make us less dependent, and in fact, more independent, from government power and coercion. They tell you the reason for this is your own good, keeping you safe and sound. But the truth you need to wake up to is that despite over a year and a half of bitter failure, our public authorities are bringing back the same policies they did before. So you are about to experience renewed lockdowns, mask mandates, and ridiculous restrictions on kids in school. They'll tell you they are doing this because they have to but they're doing it because they want to and because they can. The corrosion of our institutions, including family and community, has been happening for some time. The powers that be get rich and powerful, deploying performative wokeness as a distraction while selling us technology that makes us depressed, atomized, and hateful. Isolated and divided people are easier to manipulate. You've got a 60-inch TV. Who cares if there are opioid deaths and virulent homelessness a block away? As Christopher Lash wrote in The Culture of Narcissism, our growing dependence on technologies no one seems to understand or control has given rise to feelings of powerlessness and victimization. We find it more and more difficult to achieve a sense of continuity, permanence, or connection with the world around us. Relationships with others are notably fragile. Goods are made to be used up and discarded. Reality is experienced as an unstable environment of flickering images. Everything conspires to encourage escapist solutions to the psychological problems of dependence, separation, and individuation. The vision the left has for your ideal life is you sitting in a green-powered apartment complex waiting for your fried rice delivery while scrolling mindlessly through endless streaming products on your smart TV as your live-in unmarried partner tries to find the right filter to post a picture of your hairless cat to their Instagram feed. Normal times don't produce the outcomes the authoritarian left wants because people aren't scared enough to give them the limitless power they crave. Crises are necessary, and so if there aren't any on offer, they manufacture them. And all the while, our office holding elites who handed down these curbs are showing us how serious they actually take them. Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser, a low-rent Marie Antoinette with a brain made of pudding, was caught ignoring her own mask mandate just hours after its imposition. She signed it knowing she was going to violate it, and she didn't care. That these measures failed to demonstrably empirically control the pandemic the previous 18 months they were tried has no effect on the left's willingness to try them again. That's how you know they have something else in mind. Consider that under the ever-growing pile of so-called COVID relief measures, we've sent almost $300 billion to public schools. That's more than we spent rebuilding Europe on the Marshall Plan, even accounting for inflation. And yet still, unlike our peer countries around the world, American schools remain locked down. Who is that money for? It's not for the kids who may never recover from their lost education. Most of it won't even be spent this year. 
It's fuel for a different agenda, designed to raise subjects, not citizens. It's enough to make anyone furious. But a tough question conservatives should answer must be, where is Julia supposed to turn today in the wake of this pandemic? A single mom, hampered by college debt, facing an uncertain financial future, disconnected from those around her? In the absence of strong family, church, and community bonds, why wouldn't she just give up and get used to permanent dependence? The hard answer is that without strengthening these institutions of American life, the path of the authoritarian left will always seem easier and more straightforward, even if it is built on a lie. A long time ago, a Frenchman named Alexis de Tocqueville warned against the life of Julia approach to governance, writing, what good does it do me after all? If an ever watchful authority keeps an eye out to ensure that my pleasures will be tranquil and races ahead of me to ward off all danger, sparing me the need even to think about such things, if that authority, even as it removes the smallest thorns from my path, is also absolute master of my liberty and my life, if it monopolizes vitality and existence to such a degree that when it languishes, everything around it must also languish, when it sleeps, everything must also sleep, and when it dies, everything must also perish. There are still plenty of Americans who won't take that deal. That's why the left's efforts to weaken the family, if not done carefully, will backfire on them. When teachers start telling kids they and their parents are racist, parents might actually get fed up. They might pull their kids out of school, take over the school board, or form homeschool co-ops. They might decide that turning their kids over to the care of the state for eight hours a day is actually a very bad idea and rearrange their lives to avoid this. They might wake up to the truth. For all the insistence on pandemic permanence, the facts are encouraging. Cases may rise, but deaths aren't. Thank the vaccines for that. Thank God for that. Do not, though, thank the unthinking office holders who had nothing to do with it and who merely see this as an opportunity to exploit the moment to achieve their authoritarian aims. The left's only answer to the crisis is the only answer they've ever had. It's the only answer they've ever wanted. Their boot on your neck. But they can't do that if you are wide awake. So are you?